Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Kristen Talk Show, episode 15. This episode is titled, Positive Changes Are On The Way. And we thank God for all that he's doing today. We thank God because we know through him, that's where our strength comes from. And we are victory, victorious in our Lord. Pastor Cesar Vargas, can you hear us, sir? Yes, sir, I can. Praise God. We're on the line. Amen, sir. Amen. I welcome you, sir. I welcome all our listeners. And I know today this show is going to be a special show. Amen. 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 Amen, sir. So, Pastor Cesar Vargas, as we prepare for this episode 15, the theme, positive changes are on the way. So I know this episode is going to touch someone today, Pastor. Amen. And that's that's what our prayer is, that, that people really be touched so that their lives can be changed and transformed. Amen. Amen, sir. Amen. Well, Pastor Caesar, why don't you go ahead and give us our open? Yes, sir. Father God in heaven, we come before you, Father God, with praise and thanksgiving in our hearts, Father God. We ask, Father God, that every listener, Father God, that their heart would be pierced by your word, indeed by your Holy Spirit, Father God. I pray that you use Minister Jermaine and myself, Father God, to speak to your people, Father God. We pray that it would be your spirit and we decrease as you increase, Father God. And we are careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. I am so excited today. Amen. It's all mine. Oh, my goodness. I know something special is going to happen today, Pastor. These these two topics that we have to talk about today are very, very important. I know we say this every show, but today, I think it's going to change life. I think today is going to be a new start or refreshing drink of cold glass of water for someone, Pastor. What, what do you think? Hey man, a breath, a breath of fresh air. You know, sometimes I, I say it's it, when you hear something really good, it's like you've been holding your breath underwater for so long. And when you hear it, it's like coming up out of the water and <sighs> taking that great big gasp of air. It feels so good, you know, and I, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that this will be one of those shows today. Oh, it will be, Pastor. Oh, yes, it will be. You know, our first topic this morning, Pastor. Yes. You know, I like to I like to reference myself because um, I like uh, it's the candy bar in the United States uh, called Snickers. You know, it has yes. caramel and chocolate and peanuts and this nugget in the middle. Oh, stop and- talking about that! You can make me want one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, sometimes, Pastor, I don't have it for a long time. And you know, I'm standing in the checkout aisle somewhere, and you know, they, that's where they have it at, right? They got those candy bars and snacks kind of right there as you get ready to pay, right? And right. I look over, and I look over, I go, man, wouldn't that be nice? So, our first topic this morning, Pastor, is temptation. Oh. So, as we look at temptation, Pastor, first of all, once you help our listeners understand, What is temptation is when you're presented with something that is appealing to your eye, to your maybe spirit, to your heart, to your stomach, even anything that tempts you, that makes you want to do something. It could be good it could be bad but it's a temptation it's something we want amen yeah so so it's almost like when you when you see something or or hear something it, it enters you and it prompts you to do something you wouldn't normally do what, what do you think yes. pastor absolutely you know a lot of people would 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 even ask minister is is temptation itself a sin, right? Because people think often, uh, you know, wow, I, I was tempted. I had this thought or, 
or, oh, I was so tempted to, let's say if, if you're, you know, a person that struggled with drugs, I was so tempted, you know, to, to smoke some weed or, or, you know, take a line of Coke or something. Or if let's say it's lust, I was so tempted to watch this movie that I know has a lot of erotic parts or, or I was so tempted to, to watch this, you know, a porn movie or something, or, you, you have anger issues. Boy, that guy said this to me and I was so tempted to hit him in the face. You know, we all go through temptations, right? But temptation in and of itself is not a sin. The sin is when you not only entertain it, but when you act on it. When you act on the temptation, that's when it becomes sin. The temptation itself is not a sin. So uh, for that, let me, let me point us to a scripture in Matthew uh, 4, verses 1 through 11. Now, now, thinking about temptation, right? It says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. So see, Jesus himself was tempted. Yet the Bible tells us that he was perfect in every way. He committed no sin. So therefore, in this very first verse, it tells us that temptation is not sin. To be tempted is not sin. It's the act of the temptation that becomes the sin. Amen? Right. Amen. So it's the follow through, right? So you get yes. tempted. In my example of the Snickers bar, and then I pick up the bar and purchase it. <laughs> right? But right. It's exactly. <laughs> It's it's the it's the it's the temptation that comes upon us, and I like to look at it this way as well, Pastor. And I'm, I'm glad you brought up Matthew because a lot is going on in that particular script. And actually, where it says yes. "bow down," uh, some scriptures, uh, King James version say, "fall down and worship me," because you know the devil fell, so he was trying to tempt Jesus to do the same thing. Amen. Right. He wanted Jesus to fall with him. That's right. It's like, hey, come over here to my side, mm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, come over here mm -hmm. to my side. Do what I did. He wanted Jesus to fail. Now, think about this. Satan knows who Jesus is because he was there. He was in heaven. He was with Jesus. He was the worship leader, one of the most beautiful angels in all of heaven. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. he knew Jesus and he knew there was nothing he could do to him in the spiritual sense. Right. But all oh, that stomach growling. Mm. Now he's speaking to the, the human mm -hmm. Jesus. To the flesh. Who's, right. who's still God, but he's speaking out to the flesh mm -hmm. and saying, hey, here I might be able to get an advantage. I might be able to take over at this point. This is something maybe I can make him fall because he's hungry. Right? Just like Minister Jermaine wants that Snickers bar. 
Hey, mm -hmm. listen, he wants loaves of bread. He wants yep. something to eat, something to drink. He, he's, he's hungry. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can make him fall. And that's what Satan does all the time to us. He wants to make us trip and fall and lose fellowship with God because God hates sin and he turns away from sin. Now, you don't lose the relationship because as a prodigal son, you can always come back and repent and have God's forgiveness, who he says he throws your sins into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered again. But that surely does not give us a license to just entertain whatever we want and then act on whatever we want. Amen. Absolutely, Pastor. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and a lot of a lot of people, they fall into this temptation. I know you opened up with, um, you know, with uh, substance abuse, maybe alcohol, uh, things like that, things you shouldn't be watching on TV or even, you know, Instagram posts, whatever people are getting nowadays. Right. 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 But but that temptation creates a crack. And what the devil was doing when it, with that scripture you read was trying to find the crack. The spiritual crack, like you said, Pastor, couldn't be done. Hey, I can't. You're, you're bigger than me in the spirit. But right now, right. you're down here 40 days in the desert, and you're hungry, and you're thirsty, and you're tired. That's How it. about I find a crack? So, you know, when we find those things coming against us, Pastor, when we go through these challenges, these situations, the enemy's looking for a crack. What do you think, Pastor? Absolutely. I'm, uh, listen, I'm sure you've been uh, at a time and place, just like I have and like everybody else, where you're so hungry, your stomach is grumbling. I mean, you can literally hear the noise, you know, uh, from right. all the gases and what have you. And it's like, oh, man, I'm so hungry. Or you you feel uh, this this hunger pang in the middle of your stomach, right? And you just out of hunger. Hunger hunger makes you go through a, a whole uh, array of changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you've you heard that expression, uh, oh, he's hangry, right? Hungry and hangry yeah, at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's because the person is hungry. Now, we don't know whether Jesus' stomach was growling and the devil could hear it. We, we don't know uh, what Jesus expressed. What we do know is that he knew because he was there to tempt him. And it's like, all I got to do is speak to the flesh. Hopefully, that grumbling stomach will want to be satisfied with some food. And he'll turn these stones into bread. And now he'll fall down. I, I found the crack in the armor. And that's all I need. I just need a little bit. I just need, hey, I just need Eve to just take one bite. One mm -hmm. bite. She doesn't even have to finish the whole fruit. That's just right. one bite. That's all I need. That's it. Adam, hey, that's all I need. I, I just need to sucker him into getting one bite. And it's over. I've won. And that's what he wanted to do to Jesus. He wanted to crack, as you're saying. He wanted to crack. Just find that little opening. And that's all the devil wants. And that's all he wants to do in our lives is just give us that little opportunity that little crack that little temptation and notice jesus obviously would have wanted bread he was hungry right right notice the enemy will present you with what you already want isn't that something it is with what you already are wanting what you may be desiring which is not wrong. You may desire something and it's not wrong if you don't act on it. See, if Eve would have just looked at the apple and said, God, this is beautiful. And I know God said not to eat it, but guy, this looks so delicious. Oh man, ooh, man, look at how green or red, whatever apple it was. A lot of people say it was a quince. You know, I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, this looks so good. But if she had rejected that, it wouldn't have been sin. Just because she admired it or looked at it and thought this was great. Now, 
the difference is you can't like, like, like the Lord said, you know, listen, if you even look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery with her. So we need to be careful that that temptation is not something that we begin to entertain. See, when Satan was talking to Jesus, immediately, tell these stones to become bread. And verse four, Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. He immediately responded and he responded quickly, authoritatively, or authoritatively, and with the word of God. Amen? But that right. doesn't mean that the devil is not going to keep trying. Oh, yeah. He doesn't stop trying. He's oh, seeking. no. Because then, yeah, oh, throw yourself off. Oh, well, all this I'll give you. He, uh, let me try it this way. Well, okay, that didn't work. Let me try it that way. Well, that didn't work. Let me try it this way. So we must remain very strong in the word and in our conviction, our beliefs, our faith. We need to be strengthened by the spirit of God in those moments of temptation. Because we can become weak. And if we become weak, we can fall. Amen. No, you're absolutely right, Pastor. And, you know, you, you referenced um, one of the subtopics on who tempts us. But I want to I go ahead and read a, a quick scripture out of James 1, verse 13. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Amen. So we know that God's not doing the tempting, but he allows this temptation, Pastor. He allows this 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 season or issue to, to approach or come upon us. Why? What are you thinking? Right. It is not God, just like you read, it's not God who tempts us. Right? It is absolutely the devil. But let's take that what you just read, James 1 uh, 13, right? Yes. Sir. Let's take it even further. Look at verse 14, yes, sir. and it says, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So see, it starts as that little, that little thought, that little comment that entertaining it see when when uh when eve was talking to the serpent right if she did just cut him off i'm not listening to you this is what god said and i'm not following that and and i'm done with you see but when you start to entertain the thought well what did god really mean well is that true that he really said this hmm well i didn't i don't I, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe maybe he is afraid of me, you know, uh, becoming uh, knowledgeable. See, it's when you entertain that. You know, like I say, let's say a married man, married woman looks at somebody. Oh, wow, that's an attractive man or oh, beautiful woman. And then you take it a step further. Wow, look at she's got pretty this or pretty lips or pretty eyes or this, that, or the other. Or, oh, wow, look how big his arms are. And he's got a very small waist. He looks really attractive. And then it starts going further and further. And now you're at home by yourself and you're thinking of this and thinking of this and thinking of this. And then that desire gives birth to the sin because now you're in front of that person. That person entices you and now you fall into the sin, right? Then it becomes full grown. Now you're having a, a, an affair and it gives birth to death. You don't change, you don't repent, you leave your wife, you leave your husband and you just, ah, I don't care anymore. That's when it's super dangerous because you're completely out of the will of God, amen? Yeah, you know, Pastor, this is, this is really getting deep here because 
<clears throat> I like the way you referenced um, the next verse, which was uh, James 1, 14. So yes. we got to break it down a little bit for the audience here, Pastor. Yes, sir. So when he says, um, and I'm reading out the King James Version, when he is drawn away. So to be drawn is the same context as to be carried. So to be drawn or carried away. See, when James wrote this particular verse, Pastor, he was referencing um, how to capture animals. Right. See, 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 you don't chase animals when you want dinner. You got to draw them in. You got to put some bait out there, maybe some That's other right. meat or some chicken or some or something. And he yes. also, because he hung around Peter, he knew when you catch fish, you, you, you ever been fishing past and they got these other, these like, um, these little weights on it with, with like blinky lights and they're all shiny and stuff like that. Yes, and, yes. And what, what do they call that, Pastor? It's, um, the, the lures. Ooh. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. It's a lure. What's it's your an attention that, grabber. The, what's it's talking an about attention that, grabber. Yeah. It's, it's an attention grabber. It's, it's uh, you know, you, you look at the, the fish looks at that shiny a little thing and thinks it's a firefly or some kind of bug or whatever. And, and that's, that's where it heads towards it. And before it has a chance to even realize that, that it's a lure, the hook is already in its mouth. Wow. And now it's being dragged away. Mm, it's being carried away, dragged away. See now it's very difficult to get out of that situation because now you're being pulled, you're being carried, you're being dragged. Right. But it was the desire that was placed in front of you. I, I, you know, I, I, I used to tell my congregation, listen, all the enemy does is set the, set the stage. He sets the trap, mm, right? Mm. It's up to us, you know, like those big bear claw traps, those, those big, it looks like a big open jaw. Oh yeah. And just, and it's just waiting to spring, right? The minute you step in it and it can catch it. Uh, 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 and you know how powerful uh, um, uh, bears are, right? Well, they spring, they set the trap, but it's up to us to, that have sense. Animals may not know better, but we do. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. We know what's uh, tempting to us, what's enticing us. So either when the enemy puts that temptation in front of us, that, that bear claw trap, it's up to us to either walk around it, step over it, Right. Step away from it, not to step into it, because once it, you, you step into it and you are caught. Now you're, as we said, dragged away, you're carried away. Right. Because you followed your own evil desire and you were enticed. And you went ahead and committed that sin. Nobody else. God always provides a way out. We're the ones that don't follow that because of our own selfish desires. Well, I, I want that now. And that's why we steal. Well, I want that now. That's why you have an, an affair. Well, I want that now. And that's that's why you, you eat what you shouldn't. You, you know what I'm saying? I mean... Uh, it just we've heard like the spirit of gluttony. I mean, just eating everything in sight. I mean, you know, and um, boy, I've known some people. Listen, and I'm not trying to 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 say that you know food is is a bad thing. I mean, because God knows I can certainly eat. I got no problem with it. I love eating. <laughs> me, me too, right? sir. Especially a good meal. So, <laughs> but but when you just overdo it to the point where you're feeling sick and, and, and almost throwing up and you, you can't even breathe. And then you've got to throw away all this food because you're like, oh, I don't eat leftovers. And you got to listen, that's sin. That's sin. You shouldn't be that way. You should just eat to be satisfied, get full and be OK. You know what I mean? So it's anything as well that takes us out of the presence of God, the, 
the obedience to God is is sinful, you know, and it is always the enemy. It is never God tempting us. It is always the enemy who is the one tempting us. Amen. Because we read it in in the in Matthew four, right? It, it said, "Listen, Jesus was led into the spirit, you know, by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by who? By the devil." It says it right there. It's very plain, and yet many times we miss it. Well, why would God set us up like that? He doesn't set us up like that. The enemy sets us up like that. Amen. Absolutely, Pastor. And you know, God never gives us two more, more than which we can bear. And you know, each time that we overcome a temptation, it makes us stronger in our Lord. You know, Pastor, you already referenced, um, you know, our will in God must be stronger or greater than the temptation. And sin is not to be tempted, but the sin is to fall to the temptation. Now, Pastor, as we look at the next question here, what happens or what should we feel if we fall? How should we feel? You know, I, I had somebody uh, just this last uh, weekend uh, on Friday, as a matter of fact, somebody was, was telling me I was talking to somebody and uh, they're, they're, they're Christian. Uh, they're, they're new Christians. Um, and she got into a big uh, fight at home with some of her family members. And she cussed at them. And she was confessing this, right? She was telling me, guy, pastor, you know, I, I felt so bad. And she literally started crying. And she said she felt so bad. So I questioned her. I said, well, why did you feel bad? And she said, because I wanted to know, you know, where where she was at, kind of like what, what was it that she was feeling? She said, because I feel like I disappointed God. I failed. And I said, you know what? Then you're in a good place. I said, because when you don't feel that conviction, when you no longer feel remorseful, sad or bad, if you feel nothing, that's a danger sign. That's when it's an issue. When you're like, yeah, I cussed and I, I didn't care. He deserved it or she deserved it. I'm, psh, whatever. You should feel conviction. You should feel remorseful. You should feel, man, God, I failed and I don't want to do that. So what should we do at that point? When Because we all fall. The Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God. Every last one of us. Right? You're you're just you're 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 a Christian person, you're you're a pastor, you're a apostle, prophet. I, listen, I don't care what you call yourself or what office you have, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all should feel conviction and remorse and want to make it right with God. So what we should do, we should humble ourselves. And we should repent, right? Meaning to turn completely around and not to continue to do whatever it was that we did. Now, let me ask you something, Minister Jermaine. If I came and let's say we were kind of in a, in a, a tight hallway or something with chairs and I walk by you and I bump you. And I tell you, oh, Mr. Jermaine, I, I, I'm so sorry, man. Forgive me. It, it's so crowded in here and what have you. What, what would you say to me? I'll, I'll, me, I would say, oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> okay, right. That's, that's, that's what we should do as Christians, right? So I pass by and I do it again. Now I step on your foot and oh, I'm so sorry. And I, Okay, we know, we know the drill, right? We know seven times 70 forgive and um, okay okay but if i keep doing it and doing it and doing it after a while you're gonna be like well are you really sorry are you doing this on purpose it just seems kind of like you know we moved we moved uh we removed a lot of the chairs a lot of people are gone and you still keep passing by and hitting me on the foot and stepping on me i, I don't know that you're really sorry 
because there should be a change. There should be an action and there should be the fruit that bears uh, the testimony that, hey, listen, I am sorry I did this to you and I don't want to continue to do this again. I want to turn this completely around and not be hurting you anymore. So listen, whatever we got to do, let's stack these chairs. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll move further away. I'll, I'll get against the wall as I'm walking by. I'm going to make sure that I don't do this to you again. That's real repentance. That's me not wanting to do it. Now, the Lord knows we're going to fall, and that's why we need a Savior, right? Because if we never sinned, we'd be Jesus. We would need Jesus, right? But we do need him and we do sin. So what we have to do is we have to repent, come to him, humble ourselves, understand and realize that we did something against the Lord. Understand that he doesn't like it when we sin. He loves us so much. And we shouldn't just do it without feeling anything. Right. So we need to pray because look at uh, if you look at Luke twenty two forty, it says on reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. So, see, we shouldn't listen to the enemy or or, or our own selfish desires, because that's how Eve sinned. She became enticed by the serpent's words. Right. So. What does God do in, in response to us repenting and asking him for forgiveness and re being real sorry for what we did? And he throws our, sea, our, our sin into the sea of forgetfulness, right? Never to be remembered again. This is why we all need Jesus. We need our Savior. We need him in our lives. And once he throws it, our sin into the sea of forgetfulness, listen, we shouldn't keep Oh, well, I did this. Oh, well, I did that. Oh, well, listen, if God forgave you, who are you to hold your own sin against yourself? And that's where a lot of people miss it. Amen. Absolutely. You know, Pastor, if we look at the fall that 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 the devil is trying to tempt us and get us set up for, the opposite of that is to stand up. So our second question, Pastor, for today, our second topic, if can we stand up or how do we stand up for what we believe in? And I'm going to relate this to our convictions and our beliefs. What, what can you tell the, tell the audience today about how to stand up for what they believe? Listen, when, when for a lot of people, when they were uh, in the world, right. And somebody said something to you and upset you, you spoke out. You didn't care what they thought or how they felt about it. You just barreled in. Right. When you were angry, if you were a, a, a gang member and somebody said, where are you from? You immediately threw down your neighborhood. Right. I'm from so and so and blah, blah, blah. And what about it? Right. When 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 you had that sense of I didn't care, I wasn't afraid. I stepped up to people. And now. People ask you, oh, oh are you one of them holy rollers? Uh, no. We start to back off. We start to deny. And Christ says, listen, if you deny me before uh, men, I will deny you before my father in heaven. So we should not be in a place of such complacency. And we need to have boldness. We need to know the word of God so we can defend ourselves and defend the faith. Right. I don't mean defend ourselves in the flesh. I mean, defend ourselves, defend our faith. We need to know. We need to to be able to stand. Right. With conviction. So if I'm talking to somebody, for example, that I got healed or that God did a miracle in my life or, you know, financially or fix some situation or whatever. Listen, I'm going to tell people about it. Right. I'm not, if there's a, you know, I, I had a, a situation once where I was talking when I was much younger, we were playing basketball with a few guys 
And this guy knew that I went to church a lot and that I studied the Bible and what have you. And, and he asked me, it was a friend of mine. He says, you know, hey, I, I want to ask you a question. I was a pastor at the time, obviously. And, and he just says, you know, how come this or that happens? I don't even remember what the question was back, back in that time. Um, but I started talking to him. And before you know it, the the basketball stopped being bounced by some of the other uh, young adults. And they came over. Now it was two or three people that I was speaking to. Before you knew it, and this is not me, this is all God, because I was young. I was in my 20s. Uh, before you know it, I had all nine guys listening to what I was talking about with this gentleman, with this young adult. And they were all participating in the conversation. Now everybody started asking questions. And I realized, listen, these guys are hungry. They're hungry for the things of the Lord. But there was one guy, never forget. And he was bouncing the ball and looking at the floor and bouncing the ball and looking at the floor. Hey, guys, come on. Are we going to play or what? And everybody was just, you know, into the conversation. And he tells me, you know, hey, that that doesn't belong here in the in the on the basketball court that belongs in church, man. We don't want to hear that. Now I could have cowered down. I could have said, Oh, well, how embarrassing, you know, especially because I'm younger. It's like, Oh, I don't want to have problems. But I, I got this boldness that I know came from God. And I said, you know what? Listen, they want to hear about these things. I'm not force feeding them. They came and asked me and because they want to hear it, they shall not be denied. So that's what I'm talking about. You have to have that inner strength. You have to know who you are in Christ. You have to understand what you carry. And many, many, many people do not yet get that and understand that. They go around feeling like they're less than. Or they don't really believe that that kind of power lives in them. Because you and I have talked about the, 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 the fun house mirrors. You know, right, right. you're in there and, and you're, you're constantly shown a different image. You know, you, you're long and tall or you're short and fat or you're wide. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, it just your face is all twisted and distorted. And the enemy sometimes your own family, your loved ones, even pastors that might hurt you and make you feel inadequate and like you're less than. And that's not what God says. God says, listen, you are above and not beneath. You are the head and not the tail. You are blessed going in and coming out. You are the apple of my eye. But if you don't know the word, how are you going to know what God says about you? You're only believing the lies of the enemy. And if you don't know who you are and what you stand for, people will try to tell you or the enemy will try to tell you who you are or who you should be. And that's when there's a danger of being really lost. Amen. Yeah, Pastor. You know, you, you hit some pretty good top, uh, pretty good po talking points here. I, I want to get into uh, the boldness, but before we do, I just want to read this quick definition of conviction: um, a strong persuasion or belief, the state of being convinced, the act of convincing a person of error or compelling the, the a, a person of the truth. Now, I remember in the Bible, Pastor Daniel three, starting at verse sixteen, the three Hebrew teenagers. And, and let's pick up at verse 16 because we can see about the conviction, right? Because they're, yeah. con they're convicted to, to the word of God. And right now it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and, we will and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, verse 18, but even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods 
or worship the image of gold you have set up. Amen. Now that's conviction. That's, yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you, excuse me, that's also, <coughs> excuse me, not only conviction, but that is boldness and courage. Come on, Pastor. That is boldness and courage. Because even saying, listen, even if he doesn't show up, we will not bow down. Amen. Because they knew this is what God had said. And that's what I mean. Obeying with conviction, no matter what the circumstances are. And that's not easy to do. But it is possible. Because God himself is the one who gives us that strength. God himself is for us and not against us. God himself will rescue us. Amen. And who knows? Maybe God is saying, yeah, you're going to make the stand. But listen, I'm going to see you in a few seconds. You're going to be with me up here in heaven. Right. Because I heard that at, at, at some of them uh, shootings, I think it was the Columbine shooting that uh, one of the guys was asking the teens if uh, they believed in Jesus or not. If they said no, they got shot in the leg. If they said yes, they were shot in the head. So and there were many people that took on that and said, yes, I believe. And they knew they were going to die. And they still yet stood by their conviction, by their belief, their faith. Amen. And you know that they're in the arms of our heavenly king. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Pastor. That's that boldness. That's that conviction. That's the unwavering faith that we're supposed to have as, as a Christian. Yes. Now, I know that times get tough and some of those that you talk about, you know, those are real instances that happen here in the U.S. And there's other instances that happen around the world that we probably never hear yes. about. Yes. But let's let's take a let's take another look here, Pastor. Let's 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 take a look at, you know, knowing who you are and what you carry. So Galatians 4, 7. Now we're no longer living like slaves under the law, but we enjoy being God's, <coughs> excuse me, very own sons and daughters. And because we're his, we can access everything our father has. For we are heirs of God through Jesus, the Messiah. So we're heirs to this kingdom, pastor. Yes. You're heirs to the most high, pastor. We're heirs to the creator, from which it all started, Pastor. And if we could, if we understand that, Pastor, if we understand that we're heirs to this, that means we're there's a relationship, there's a there's there's there, there's a, a family relationship given to us automatically. So why do we keep losing it? Why do we think we lose it? I believe that. Because we're distracted. We we are, uh, like we were talking about earlier, tempted, right? We're, we're distracted. The enemy, he loves to, you know, uh, keep the balls moving in the air, so to speak, to have you looking and looking at the juggle, the juggle, the juggle. And instead of buckling down and focusing on the things of God and on his word, and on prayer, and on evangelizing, we get caught up in the things of the world. How many of us, when we wake up in the morning, right? God has given us the very breath of life to breathe that morning. And how many, and ask yourselves, I ask this for our listeners, how many of you, first thing you do is grab your phone, and start looking at your messages, your Facebook account, your Instagram, your TikTok account, whatever it is. How many of you start looking at how many likes you have? How many people saw your photo? 
instead of waking up and thanking our very God and Father who gave us the breath of life to breathe that morning, who woke us up, amen, and being happy and praising and worshiping him and, and getting into his presence and reading his word or worshiping, we're all distracted. And if you think about it, a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of our audience, because I, listen, Mr. Jermaine, I was one, you know, used to, first thing I, I used to get back in that time was MySpace, mm -hmm. right? I know I'm dating myself here, but, <laughs> so you know, I would, I would, I would, that was the first thing I would reach for, you know, the, the phone, computer, not thanking God for waking me up or for, for providing for me, for loving me, for protecting me, for protecting my family. And, and that's, I think, how we get lost. We get drawn away from the things of God. And then we get so far away that we now almost start to ignore God. And you do that long enough before you know it. Some people even stop believing in God. And now we're in a in a big danger zone because just like when you go to the gym and right, when you're working out at first, it's hard. It's hard. And you, you know, uh, you're not lifting very much. And a few days later, you're, you're just feeling all kinds of pains and aches, right? Now, the muscles you didn't even know you had are aching. And then as, as you start to get used to it, everything is good. You're feeling, you're feeling good. You're feeling strong. You're feeling healthy. You've got endurance. You've got, power, all this stuff. And then you get away from the gym for a week, two weeks, a month, a couple months. Before you know it, you never even go back. It's been 20 years you haven't stepped into the gym, right? Because it's so hard to come back and your body remembers all the pain it had to go through. So, yeah, it's, it's difficult when you get away from the things of God, you got to stay close. You have to stay close in order to live in that power. Amen. Amen, sir. Amen, sir. And and I, and I tell you what, Pastor, that's the hour. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. You know, time wow. just flies by when we talk about God. It really, it, it really does. Boy, this was this was great. This is powerful, Pastor. I tell you Amen. what, I, I'm feeling so good right now. And I know our audience and our listeners are feeling feeling the same. You know, Amen. Pastor, I, I'm so know, excited. I, yeah, you know, me, me too. Me too. Um, Pastor, why don't you go ahead and give us, uh, you know, tell the audience some, some closing remarks here. I, I, I'd like to, uh, because I know, I know that uh, many times, you know, people, sin can really uh keep us from being close to God. And a lot of people think that because once they sinned, uh well now nah, I can't go back. Forget it. I might as well just give this up. And I want to just let you know out there, listen, don't quit. I want to read something really quick uh, for you Old Testament folks, okay, in Mika uh 719, it says once again you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean. And for you New Testament folks, let's take a look at Hebrews 8, 12. It says, once again, you will have compassion on us. You will trample our sins under your feet and throw them into the depths of the ocean. So Old Testament, New Testament, old time, present day. Amen. God. As long as we repent, yes, yes. we'll have compassion on us. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. No, you got it, Pastor. Amen. Praise God. Wow. Wow, Pastor. That is that is so awesome. And we thank you uh, for those closing remarks and, and, and giving us the word to lean on as we close out, Pastor. Amen. Pastor, you mind God, if I you... go ahead and give, give us our uh, closing prayer? Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for dwelling with us, and we thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing us today and getting us stronger in you, 
knowing that the temptation is not the sin. And we know now not to fall into temptation to lead us into sin. But Heavenly Father, if we fall, we know that you're so loving. We know that there's no condemnation. We know that we have we have forgiveness within you. Yes. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for blessing the listeners, blessing Pastor Pastor Caesar, blessing his family, and blessing everyone that hears this. Please continue to uplift him in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, so Pastor, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to all the listeners out there. And I know that God is going to continue to lift lift all and each and every one of us up during this week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and remember, you, you have, have the, power. the power. Amen. Amen.